Alrighty, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be talking about a clip from the Tamron Hall show. Um, it's basically just like kind of like a talk show. Uh, we've talked about this show before in the past. Um, it's it's just a talk show. But they did an episode, or at least a segment, where they talk about basically like fat positivity, health at every size, and stuff, right? And so the the title of this clip is why these women are proudly embracing their bodies in the midst of toxic diet culture. And there is a large amount of women that Tamron brings on the show and they all kind of talk about their experiences and stuff. And so I just kind of wanted to go over this. So without further ado, let's get into the video. When I was 11 years old, I attended a summer camp where my counselor called me Butterball the entire summer. I struggled my body in very classic ways of really desiring the average teenage experience where I get to have a high school crush. I get to maybe imagine that a boy in my math class would like me back. And none of those things came to fruition. Most Latinos, we have this idea of what a Latino body should look like. You were supposed to be curvy, but only curvy and thick in the right places, right? It's interesting hearing a lot of what they talk about and their own experiences. Obviously, I'm a dude, so my experiences were different. But there is a lot of the stuff that they've explained, especially like the wanting a, a you know a dude to like you back. I definitely had those types of feelings, you know, really wanting a woman or a girl to like me back when I was in high school. Like there was like a lot of those things, but it's. Just interesting because those things led me to realize that I needed to make a change because there was something that I was doing um, that was you know causing me to have this weight on like is it fair that you know people don't like you if you're bigger a lot of times you know and it's just not seen as like the beauty standard I mean no it sucks right but at the end of the day like I can't control how other people feel, but I can control the things that I can control. And so that was one of the things that led me into being like, okay, I need to lose this weight. Not because only I want people to like me, but there, I mean, there was a host of reasons, but that was certainly part of it, right? Now as a photojournalist, I strive to tell the stories of fat joy and simply existing in your body. And there's been ups and downs, but right now I can say that I'm truly happy with who I am, what I represent, and what I can provide to other people that look like me. After over two decades of being at war with my body, I have finally found peace in my body and we have come to a mutual agreement to care for and love each other. And that feels like freedom. All right, welcome back. Arthur Chrissy King is with us today. She's ignited a really good conversation about toxic dieting culture with her new book. It's called The Body Liberation Project. We're also joined. So I, I've been on a, a number of these shows now, and it's interesting because, like, at least in my experience with a lot of them, like, the host of the show doesn't really, like... <laughs> <laughs> this might sound messed up, but like they don't a lot of times they don't really know much about the guests like they they didn't talk to the guests. They didn't interview them before. Like all of that is down to the producers, right? The producers really do all of the running of the show. And they a lot of times, I mean, they have writers. They have a lot of people basically telling them what to say. And so it's always just so interesting for me now watching the shows and, and seeing the hosts like act like they're so like enamored by the guests when like they probably had no idea who this person was until earlier that morning right but that's besides the point point. my jackie malloy kendra austin and jessica torres who say that after struggling with body image throughout their lives they are ready to share what's brought them to a place of joy and i know chrissy that's a big part of what you talk about the joy in your journey and and we are very mindful of it on our show i always tell my team we don't want to have a series of people saying this is how hard it is because life is hard but how did you get past it that's a big part of the story and jessica i'm so struck by your story you're you're 32 now mm -hmm. uh living the dream you're covering yeah. fashion which we could tell by the look <laughs> um you cover travel for a plus size from a plus size perspective but until 10 years ago, you never posted a full body picture of yourself. No, not at all. I live- Well, you're working it in these yeah. pictures now. <laughs> I love how many of me. Look at you. So, oh, <laughs> Ma'am! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, look at you. Okay, listen. It's, it's the, the role for me, it's the, all this. When, when I first saw this and she said the role, at, at, at first I thought she said the roles and I was like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> but that's not what she said. Here, <laughs> um, oh 10 years ago, you wouldn't have done that. No, not at all. I was someone who wanted to blend in with the wall. Like I was the classmate that was in the back because I didn't want anyone to see back rolls to see my arms or anything like that. So I didn't live life. I wasn't really 
living the experience. I was just going by and pretending to be part of the wall. And so again, this is really interesting because I've explained basically the same thing, right? I've always, I've talked about it when I was at my heaviest. I was, I wasn't living. I was just existing, right? There was like a lot of things that I was missing out on, but it's just so interesting. And like, I don't want to like, I'm not trying to call this woman out and be like, oh my God, like whatever. But for me, that was a sign. Okay. I need to change some stuff, right? Like there are, there are things that need to happen so I can live this life that I want. Because for me, it wasn't like, oh, it's the size that's keeping me from it because it I'm worried about what people will think. A lot of it was like, there are things that I truly just can't do because of my size. Like experiences that I wanted to have that not because I was worried what people would think about me, but because my size is hindering me from doing those things, right? Like skating, like being able to do more than just ride my board. Because even when I was bigger, I rode. But like being able to do more than just that. And like so many other things that my size hindered me from. So for me, that was like, okay, let's make a change. It's very different than obviously the the route that this woman went down. Um, and it wasn't until I realized that I missed prom because I was like, you know what? That's not for me. Someone who looks like me won't or shouldn't be there. That's what I thought. That's what yes. we've all been, you know, thought to believe. Um, and then I was like, I can't, I can't afford it anymore. Like mentally, physically to not be part of my own life yeah. and not make the decisions for myself rather than- I listen love to it, me. I love it. Um, much like what Chrissy talked about with childhood, some of this came from childhood family and mm -hmm. doctors. Which yeah, doctors. Absolutely. So I have a younger sister who's thinner, um, but they thought we were twins mm -hmm. um, because we were really close in age and we would both walk in and they would automatically, without even looking at blood or anything, diagnose me and be like, oh, if she's like really in bad condition, blood would come back and everything was fine. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, okay. So I guess you're not, you're not, you're not going to die. You're not going to die from being fat, yeah. which was like constantly what we're told. Um, so you start... <sighs> So this is when I'm like, oh, okay, a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing at first, like the first part of this video, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I, I understand. And like, even when she started bringing up the, the doctor stuff, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I definitely have always said I agree with, it's one of the biggest points I agree with health at every size is the fact that, you know, having doctors be, uh, you know, learn some sort of better way to handle obese patients or fat patients or overweight patients, whatever words you want to use. Um, because I do think that it's super traumatizing and to make the place that you should be going to hopefully help with this condition, right? To make that the most anxiety inducing place to go is probably not the best option, right? And like, I've talked about how I felt about stuff like that, but then kind of going and seeing that and being like, oh, well, you know, uh, we took my blood and I was healthy. It's like, okay, this is where I, I struggle because yes, of course, when you're young, you can absolutely be healthy and be overweight and even be in your twenties, you know, be overweight and be healthy. But eventually, you know, that is going to catch up to you. And it might not be when you're 20, it might not be when you're 30, but eventually your weight is going to cause you serious problems. And I get very frustrated when people say like, oh, your weight has nothing to do with your health. Like, th like just be for real. Like, come on, dude. That is la la land stuff. Like, we can talk about like, oh, you know, we should treat people better, all that stuff. Like, I agree with that. I'm not even against it. But to then make the jump to be like, yeah, and you can be completely healthy and be massively overweight. Like, I'm sorry, but no, like to a certain extent, your weight absolutely causes you problems. And like another thing that kind of frustrated me is like, not frustrated me, but it's just, it's what I always end up saying is that a lot of these women, like, yeah, they're kind of overweight, but they're not at a point where your weight will cause you serious issues. But the, and, and like the reason I bring that up is because this message is going to go out to people that their weight is going to be a serious issue. And so no, they're not like, you know, only, you know, 70 pounds overweight. They're like 270 pounds overweight, 300 pounds overweight, 200 pounds overweight, right? To where like their mobility has been affected, their life has been affected. They, they really have all these issues and they see this stuff and they think, oh, see, that's right. When in reality, like these women are nowhere near where someone else might be. And it just really frustrates me because like to sit, sit here and see someone that has like severe sleep apnea that they lose the weight and then it is gone to say that, <laughs> that your weight has nothing to do with your health is like ridiculous. It is ridiculous to me. And that's just one example, right? You're believing it. Right. So what you're saying is as a kid, you go in, the doctors would see your weight and say, she's unhealthy. It's the easy. blood work would come back that nothing was wrong. Nothing was wrong. Right. But they still had a view of you being an unhealthy yeah. child and you were hearing this a lot. Um, Jackie, you had the, that story about being at camp. I mean, I, I mean, just, I think camps are great, but 
I only went to camp for two days because that happened. <laughs> you get bullied in camp. And I called my father and said, come and get me. <laughs> um, you had that, that classic childhood experience of going to camp and hearing hurtful words about yourself. And that impacted, of course, how you saw yourself. Yeah, it really did. And, you know, I was called Butterball by one of my counselors. And I think at the time I thought, I didn't actually know it was offensive. I kind of thought it was like endearing and funny and something to do with like my personality. And then I have an older sister and she kind of like cued me in and was like, no, like she's making fun of you. Like she's calling you fat. And it's something really unique to like be fat shamed as a child before you even know what fat shaming is. Yeah. I mean, that sucks, man. Like I, I dealt with similar stuff like that. Like, um, Growing up in the church for me, I'm not, you know, if you go to church, it's fine. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But growing up in the church, like, I was, like, very deep into it. And uh, I had a lot of, like, leaders and stuff that were a little too comfortable kind of making fun of my weight. And that, that always hurt extra because it was, like, it just felt so wrong, you know? And then because it gives the other kids, like, this almost free pass to do it as well. And then even if they say it in the, the counselor or, like, the leader is like, oh, don't say that. The kids are like, well, you did it, you know? And it, that sucks. That just sucks. Right. Because so, you didn't even know yeah. process fully what it was. Yeah, I didn't even connect it. I didn't even understand that she was making fun of me. That makes it even more hurtful because you went in with the innocence of a yeah, child. Exactly. And then you learned something. But through um, your journey, you've become a photojournalist. Yeah. And you actually attended an adult camp mm -hmm. that was a safe space that embraced and celebrate women of all sizes. I have what you wrote. You said never had I seen fat women so free. Mm -hmm. Those were, and I was a little hesitant to read that, that's your word. Yeah, it was such a remarkable experience. Um, this is Camp Roundup, and it's an amazing summer camp. Okay, I've changed my mind about camps now. I like camps. <laughs> it was incredible, you know, it was like these women coming, they could just fully be themselves. Mm -hmm. They were incredible. They got to bond and talk about if they wanted to, some of the things that they'd experienced and gone through. I mean, I had really never been to a public pool where I hadn't seen a fat woman stand on the side trying to cover herself or like drop the towel at the very last second and hear everyone like strutted to the pool and jumped on in. It was like jiggling and nobody cared. <laughs> and it was amazing. I love it. I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's good. It makes you happy by all means. Um, Kendra, you said something, speaking of humanizing words, uh, you're a model and a writer, and you said um, you call your body a vessel for your soul's purpose. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, and, and those words are even more powerful when I reveal to the audience that as a teenager, you were 14, mm -hmm. you were taken to Mexico to have gastri a gastric band surgery. Mm -hmm. Yes. By the so, okay. The first thing is like the whole vessel thing. I un I understand where that's coming from, but like for me, I'm just like, okay, that makes me feel like it almost makes me feel like, yeah, that, that, that means that you should take care of it even more. Right. Because like, if you only have this one vessel, you know, this one thing that can, um, you know, be the, the vessel for your soul, why would you not take care of that and, and treat it with as much respect as you possibly can, right? And I'm not saying you have to go and kill yourself in the gym and like do these terrible workouts that you really, that you really hate or do this, these diets that are over the top and just killing yourself. But like to say that, oh, I am respecting this vessel by, and like, I'm not saying that this woman is doing it, but again, this is the logic that I hear to say, I'm respecting this vessel by barely moving at all by eating whatever I want all of these things that are and, and like and and making this vessel probably end sooner than it needs to because of these choices I'm making like how is that respecting it right and then the other thing is it's funny that she brings up the whole uh you know the gastric sleeve or the gastric bypass or whatever or the um you know the uh sleeve um because I or the lap band right I think that's what they're talking about because I actually had a similar experience. I actually almost got the lap band when I was around the same age, actually. Um, I'm glad that I did, decided not to do it um, personally. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I thought that was interesting. By the time I was a teenager, I had I probably had my first diet pill by the age of seven. I had been on many diets by the time I was probably 10 and 11. Um, I have very distinct memories, similar to Chrissy, of like journaling about how how I envisioned my life when I was thin. At, by the time I was a teenager, I'd already internalized like so many women, particularly I think raised in Western society in America, 
um, like that my body was an accessory that was going to grant me the privilege of being loved, oh, yeah. right? And it was a status symbol. It was something that would grant me the love of my life, the job that I imagined, the power and influence I believed that I was capable of because I was, I did believe I was capable of that. I believed that I was like intended to affect change and to transform people's lives. And I thought the only- I definitely think that that's one of the biggest issues that we see in the fitness industry and just weight loss industry in general is like the over idealization, I guess, of losing weight. It's, it, it can be an incredible tool, but it is not a, you know, it's not a silver bullet. It's not like a magic pill that you, you lose the weight and then all of these things that you struggled with in your life before are now magically fixed. And like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart because so many people think that losing weight will solve all their problems. They lose the weight and then they, they realize that they are, they almost feel worse now that they've lost the weight because they put on the, put it, put in all this work. They had idealized it so much that when they get to the destination, they're like, wait, what? Like, Everything I worked for, I felt like was a mirage, right? It, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And I really think that we need to make sure this was something that I try and do is like losing the weight will help whatever, like, you know, certain health issues that you might have because of your weight, but it is not going to automatically make you happy. It might make you happier, of course, but it's not going to solve your depression. It's not going to solve your anxiety. It's not going to make you, you know, all of a sudden happy and everything is, you know, rainbows and butterflies. It's not, it doesn't do that at all. Like even slightly, really, I mean that, right? But it does help. <laughs> it does have some, there are benefits from it. That's I wouldn't try and get people to lose weight or like try and help people that want to lose weight if I didn't think there were benefits. But I think it, it's important to be as realistic as possible. But sadly, you know, in the, the day and age that we are, it's all about trying to push it and push it and push it and try and make everyone think that it's it's perfect. And the more you make it seem like the panacea and like the the salt, the thing that will solve everyone's problems, the more people will buy your program, the more people will go and, and follow you, the more people will, will buy into everything you're saying, right? That's why so many people do it. And it's, it is really frustrating because it's not that. It really isn't. Only way that I would be granted the space to do that is if I were smaller and claimed less space. So you had these big dreams of impacting the world, helping yes. other people, and your idea is I can do this, but it, only if I'm thin. I'm thin, right. And of course, like, so much of that is built by the fact that like my mother and her mother and the women around me and before me were all like raised in this like 80s diet culture of like Denise Austin videos and Billy Blanks and like literal cottage cheese being something that we thought was delicious, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm so struck by this because you bring up the 80s when I was a teenager. <laughs> oh, that, that laugh track is tragic. I'm so struck by this because you bring up the 80s when I was a teenager. Um, and Chrissy, the whole point of this show was to talk about this, this reemergence of the toxic diet culture. Again, I, I refrain from judging people. I don't know anybody's journey other than my own. Um, but you do have folks who are taking the modern magic pill, which is a drug meant for people with diabetes. So they're talking about Ozempic, like we go be all those kinds of things right now and it's the new magic bullet mm -hmm. for losing weight. I mean, the reality is that we could spend the rest of our lives looking for the magic bullet, right? Or looking for the thing, because as Kendra already stated, this idea that when I'm in my thinner body, then all the beautiful things are gonna happen, right? We've been sold this lie that life begins on the other side of fat loss, right? I'll find the partner of my dreams, I'll have the job of my dreams, I'll have the life of my, I'll be beautiful, like all these things we have been told are on the other side, and that's simply not true. And you know, speaking of you know Ozempic and all of the di the diet industry is a 72 plus billion dollar industry yeah, yeah. for a reason, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the truth. Chrissy, you were married um, from age 22 to 33, yes. and before you amicably divorced. Yes. Um, and you wrote in the book one of the things I never. Bro, getting married at 22, that's that sounds like dude, that's wild, bro. That's so young. But I mean, more power to you, I guess anticipated was how much entering the dating scene at the age of 34 would trigger my body image issues. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you, bro. Entering the dating age at 34, a dating pool at 34. Oof, that does not sound fun. Like being on Bumble and Tinder at that age. No, thank you. So dating. I'm 30, by the way. Okay. I'm not trying to be like, that's old. I don't want to be on those websites either. <laughs> again triggered some of these old feelings absolutely because it's one thing to like come to this place where you like are just so at peace 
and you love and you embrace the body that you're living in. But the reality is we live in a world that is incredibly fat phobic, right? And, and so there, you're gonna come into contact with people who don't have those same values about bodies that you do, right? And so, yes, it's like very, it definitely triggered my body image issues in ways that I wasn't necessarily anticipating to be out in the world dating men who have opinions about bodies. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was the- How dare they? Unbelievable. <laughs> Again, this, this place of me coming back to myself and realizing again, reinforcing what I know to believe to be true. And also remembering that I don't want to date anyone who really is just interested in how I look anyway. Right. And so if you're not- Absolutely. A, right, that's all right, you see. That's all you see. Yeah. Jessica, you said earlier. I don't know. I mean, I've talked about this and people got mad at me. I mean, people have preferences. If someone doesn't want to date someone that's overweight, like I, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's your choice. I don't, I don't know. I, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. You you skipped your prom. Mm -hmm. You skipped your prom. Have you been able to get past that? Because I, that ex well, I mean, I hope so. She's in her thirties now. Okay. Have you been able to get past the fact that you didn't go to prom? I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> like, what kind of question is that? I'd be sitting there like, bro, I'm thirty. What do you mean? <laughs> Again, is it's a rite of passage, mm -hmm. and you deserved that rite of passage, mm -hmm. and you were. Were made to feel that you when I first saw this, I thought they were she was about to be like, Well, we're gonna throw a prom for you, and I was just like, Oh my god, please don't do that. Thankfully, they don't, did it right. And I think that's what motivates me to keep going in life in a in the most amazing way that I can. Yeah. I want to fulfill everything that I thought I couldn't do before. I feel like I'm living all the dreams that I kind of hid when I was younger. I was like, I didn't even want to say that I wanted to go to prom. You're like, No, that I don't want to even do that, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I didn't think that I deserved it. You get the prom every day with your job. <laughs> And the thing, I just want to make it clear, I feel the same way, right? Like I've been, I'm able to live out all of these things that I wanted to do when I was younger as well. And so there are different avenues and different paths to get to the point that it seems that we're both at. Just saying. Uh, exactly. Like all, all the kids that went to high school, yeah. wish they were you yeah. now. Um, Jackie, to, to bring this to a close, one of the things I love that you talk about is that we need more happy stories. You want to see more kindness and how we talk about each other's bodies. And you all have made the point, even when we walk up to someone and we say, oh my gosh, you look so thin. We comment instantly on that versus looking in someone's eye and just saying, hi, I'm yeah. happy right. to see you. How yeah. are you? How are you? Hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I've reclaimed yeah. the word fat personally. I think maybe yes. everyone yeah. goes on their own journey of that. But yeah. right now, I think maybe at least the four yeah. of us yeah. have reclaimed yeah. that you word. Say thin, you should be able to say fat. Like, yeah. that right. distance is not a dirty word. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If you just yeah. 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 Right? Like, yeah. that is a description it's a of someone, it's yeah. not, it's been used as an insult, it's been used as a word to... I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but I think it de really depends on how you say it, right? Like, you could say, like, oh yeah, that fat woman over there, I mean, I still would feel, you know, but like, if you were like, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I think it depends on how you say it, in my opinion. Bullying right. to her, but it's a descriptive yeah. word. I have to ask you, Chrissy, when you wrote the book, what was your biggest dream that would come from this? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. Honestly, when I wrote that book, I, I really, in my heart, wanted to be used as a vessel to help liberate and set people free. And I felt like if one person is, is liberated through that book, I've done the work I was supposed to do in this world. Wow. Yeah. Thank All right, so that's the entire video. I thought it was interesting because I was like, okay, well, like, what are the comments on this? Like, what do people think about this? Even the comments on this video are people that don't really agree with it, which is interesting because, like, if you're, you know, it's her channel, right? And uh, I'm not saying I agree with all of these comments, but, like, uh, none of these women think um, what think about what the men want. Um, they all want relationships. The author spoke about body positivity and, and, um, and about what sounds nice. Things sounding nice and the truth are two different things. It sucks to be shamed as a man for your preferences. Um, I think we can sleep easy knowing that regardless of how much they do shows like this, the general norm will never change. Women tend to prefer taller men. I don't know why that's brought up, but whatever. Um, men who can't change their height accept this. Men tend to prefer slim slash fit women. Women who choose not to hit the gym nor focus on their health will have to face that reality. Reality won't change just because you want it to. Nonetheless, folks will say this body positivity led them to the grave. I understand you being happy with your body, but that doesn't mean the man, woman, or person you're attracted to feels the same. Most of these women and those like them have a standard also. They want a handsome, financially stable partner. It shouldn't be a shock that standards exist on the opposite side. So a lot of like stuff like that, right? 
And it is really interesting because again, it's crazy because we see so much media about this type of stuff and so much of this gets pushed into our face, I feel. And, but yet it is very rare that outside of this very small circle, you get people that agree. And so I just, it's just crazy to me how much we see. And I'm sure that I see a lot more because of <laughs> the videos that I make, but it's crazy how much you see this stuff being pushed and just how much it is clear it's such a niche thing because even the comment section of this video where this video is coming from are people mainly disagreeing with it and so i do think that's interesting that there it seems there's a big push but it doesn't seem like people are like most people are like no i'm sorry i just don't don't agree right and so I just wanted to share my opinion. I thought it was an interesting video. I would love to know what you think down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.